Howdy all of you delicious people I'm here today to view Jeepers Creepers 1.5. As you can tell, there's a big massive 3 over here, but for the life of me, I can't go on and call this movie and have, with that title, have a 3 in it. There's probably a reason for that, right? Come to find out, Jeepers Creepers 3 is to realize that it is not going to be as good as its prequel film. So what it did was, is it just decided that it's like, well, we're just going to have Jeepers Creepers 3 sandwiched in between 1 and 2. Because, like, when really looking at it, we're not going to be as good as Jeepers Creepers 2. So, and I was like, oh my god. That's, that's brilliant. There is to quite possibly be so much in this film that doesn't pan out in two or pay off in two. But, like, I thought that this was just so funny. Um, to have this movie who's just like, oh no, like, we're just gonna go on and we're gonna be the prequel to our prequel. <laughs> Because we know what we're doing. And so I was like, you know what? Like, give him props for that. <laughs> that was just, like, a thing that just broke my brain. And I was like, wow, this is cool. Uh, but a lot of people may not feel that way. So, uh, I guess the next time I'm ever to re-watch this movie, I guess I have to go on and, and change the order of these movies. As I did not realize that. So... With this film, uh, the one thing that we are to do is to tie in some people from the very first Jeepers Creepers 1 movie. And so, come to find out while I was kind of looking through stuff, I ended up realizing that Coach Dwayne, who was in Jeepers Creepers 2, was actually Roach. In Jeepers Creepers 1. I guess this guy was to be a prisoner. And he was to be supposedly let go. And there is to have been a whole scene. Where Roach was supposed to get grabbed. And the Creeper was supposed to like take this guy. And with him... And then realize that this guy has nothing the creeper needs. And so the, Ro the Roach character was to just be let go. So, funny enough, the creeper was to realize that Roach had nothing for him. But, year but time passing later... Coach Dwayne, I guess, had something to offer him. <laughs> yeah, I guess he was just like, well, maybe I just needed a second whiff, you know? Maybe I just needed a second uh, a second breath uh, to kind of make sure. Uh, as, the, as Coach Dwayne was to, of course, get killed like a number of other people uh, upon that bus. So, come to find out... By the end of this movie, we finally figure out where that javelin sack came from in Jeepers Creepers 2. Because Buddy came prepared. <laughs> Even if it didn't make sense, Buddy comes prepared. Because <laughs> that is the only sack that is to be supposedly on that bus. And so... I'm going to have to go on and go back into Jeepers Creepers 2 to wonder what color of sack was on that bus. So I can just say, like, well, like, is does it match continuity? We also have a person by the end of this movie who is seeking vengeance. I'm going to get my come. I'm going to get my vengeance upon the creeper. And this person does not go on and rejoin the franchise at any point of this of of the Jeepers Creepers movies. So it's like, 
okay, like, what a bad payoff that was. Um, but anyways, let's, let's go into story about this film. So, we, like, kind of like the ending of this movie is to be very, like, uh, similar to the ending of the Power Rangers reboot movie. <laughs> Tommy? Tommy Oliver? Where is he? <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> We won't, because there won't be a sequel to that. Sadly enough. So. So, for this film, we are to also showcase that people are to talk to ghosts. That, of course, are to have these visions. And so I was like, okay, so... Like, at first, we thought that the the Vision characters were to be whenever the Creeper would be nearby, and then somebody would just get these visions. And now, come to find out, we have a number of people that all are to have had these visions. And come to find out, when you touch the creeper's hand in this film, we find out its origin. And I was like, okay, like, that's interesting. But, like, I don't like the fact of how much time they spent on that, how they really milked that out in this film. Um, But then, like, the basic story of this movie... So, we not only have this continue on from the last, uh, or from the, the original, I mean, Jeepers Creepers movie. I want to make that clear. So, we have a girl named Addison, who is to be a girl on this barn with her, uh, with her grandmother, Galen, and so... Addison is to realize that they're starting to run out of money for this barn. And Addison is just trying to uh, figure out how her horse is going to get hay. And so Addison is to want to go on to meet up with the Hooks family to try, try and see if she can get hay. And so all while that is going on. We then get to when the creeper is to come in and start attacking people. Because at certain points, we are to focus on the creeper's uh, truck, his vehicle. Because his vehicle is to have all these Wemadine like gadgets and all these things. But we also have the creeper that comes in here. And he, of course, has a different assortment of weapons that he is to have compared to the original film and also Jeepers Creepers 2. To say it's like, well, man, like if he had all of this, like all of this stuff, if he had all, if he had everything, like, man, you would think he would have been an unstoppable force going into Jeepers Creepers 2. But then come to find out in 2... We really don't see the vehicle really being all that used in Jeepers Creepers 2. So they could possibly have some leeway here for what they're doing with the vehicle because they're like they're thinking ahead and just like, well, yeah, but like did we see much of the vehicle in two? Not really. So we can kind of do whatever we want. <laughs> So I was like, all right, like, that's, that, that's clever. That's clever film. And so now I'm going to go on as I've kind of compiled and said all of this stuff about this movie. And I've gone on and praised this movie at certain points. And I know a lot of people would have that irk the crap out of them because they don't like this film. And I completely understand Believe me, I'm, I'm not trying to, like, be sarcastic or anything like that. But so, 
now I have to go on and grade this film. How did I feel about this movie? In all honesty, Jeepers Creepers, to me, or Jeepers Creepers 3, this film, this film is okay. It's okay. There's a lot of goofy things going on in this film. I will admit that. Uh, there were times where I honestly just laughed at this film. Because I was like, oh my god, this is so, like, this is so stupid. This is so goofy. Like, they built up to that, like, death machine. They're like, yeah, like, we're gonna get him this time around. And we're going to use this big machine. C -c yeah, we're, we're going to have this gun on this truck. And it's going to work out. And pa -la -la -la. <laughs> Minutes later. <laughs> Why? Why have that build just be like, yeah, like, we're going to get him. We're going to have this, this thing. C -c -c yeah, yeah, it's going to work. Just to have it just turn around and man, there is some line delivery in this film that, like, I thought was so goofy. And most of the time, it was coming out of Sheriff Dan's mouth. When we have Sheriff Dan that was talking to Sergeant Davis, is like, bloody. <laughs> I know you've gotten all bloody <laughs> lately. <laughs> I'm like, the way that he just said bloody, I just started to laugh. <laughs> But then also we had Sheriff Dan that was going on and trying to convince, uh, I think his name was uh, Miller, to try to go on and try not to do what he was going to do by the end of this film. And we have the sheriff who's just passionately like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like that that just seemed funny to me. Um, no offense to San Shaw. It was just some of the stuff that he just said in this film. I couldn't help. Uh, I just could like, but yeah, but so like so much about this also was trying to defeat the creeper in a way that, uh, that kind of felt like jaws where like uh you're having the guy who's setting up the 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 gun and he's like oh give me that smiling face give me that smiling face shark and so we're having that kind of build of like the creeper who's like yeah i'm bringing my wings in i'm bringing them up and we have sheriff dan who's like kuh, kuh, kuh. like god dang it this machine <laughs> Like, I'm having to really jerk this thing around. Come on. And it just felt like they were, like, really building that up. Because they had some real time to kill in this film. And so Sheriff Dan is just, like, pushing this thing. And then all of a sudden, by the perfect time, we unleash it all. We unleash, so to speak. Uh, but then come to turn around and... We see what happens aftermath of all of that. Uh, being very vague, but it is what it is. So, with that said, let me know how you felt about Jeepers Creepers 3. I'm sure there's a lot of people that will go on and just like, No! How could you have gone on and graded this movie that way? How could you? I don't know, I guess I'm just an easily satisfied person. And I think that's what really just this movie gave me was to just be easily satisfied with a with a movie that kind of like we we really had a meh story, um, but like at least there was just like something here where I could possibly say it's like well at least this is better than the fourth film in my brain, <laughs> but again. People will have their own opinions about this franchise as it is. Some people might go on and like the fourth film compared to this one. And you know what? Like, that's okay. 
that's fine. Like, I have my own opinion. Like, I could obviously say that, like, I can understand if somebody likes something about the other films um, and so on and so forth. So with that said, I also don't remember the grading of uh, the very first original Jeepers Creepers movie and that I did like a while ago. So if this grading is oddly enough just better than that or the same, then like I would have to downgrade whatever grading that I gave on this movie because this movie is obviously not as good as the original. Let's put that plainly. Um, and let's say that again. This movie is not as good as the original. <laughs> so I think there's a lot of people that go on like, wait a minute, he said something about the original in this movie? Wait a minute, he said, he's like, does that mean it's better than the original? No. I don't, I don't know what the confusion is. <laughs> so with that said, um, let's go on and let's go into double five time territory. I've already been talking about this for 16 minutes. I don't know why. Because it's time to justify that it is spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time you get to spoil this movie. So, in the very beginning of this movie, we, of course, have a man running in the dark. And we also had a number of crows that were, ah, 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 what, what why? I get it that now it seems that we have to really set up these crows if we haven't before. But we just have this massive tree of all these crows and they're, ah, ah, why? Why? How is that a pleasing shot? <laughs> just me thinking. So, we go on and have this guy running off in the night with his machete... And I think he's just called Machete Guy, because I don't think he actually legitimately has a name. So, Machete Guy is to go on and be running in front of this vehicle that coincidentally ends up being Kenny's vehicle. And come to find out, we have the creeper who grabs the macheted man, and the machete ends up landing on top of Kenny's vehicle. So, come to find out somewhere in this film, uh, that is to have me talk about it out of order, Kenny here was to go on and find the hand of the creeper amidst this road and was to take it home because I guess he had gone on to probably touch the hand. And so... He, I guess, had gone on and seen visions, I'm assuming. And so this guy is to go on and to have taken this hand and put it in this barn. And the horses could not stand being in this barn. And so they run off. And so we have Kenny and we have Galen and... Kenny is telling Galen to get all the horses and Kenny will deal uh, with the reasoning for why the horses are running out of this barn. So Kenny goes on and takes the hand and puts it in some bag and then shoots it multiple times. Really just makes sure that this hand is just, it's not going to die. So <laughs> Kenny shoots this thing multiple times and then buries it. And for some reason, we go on to find later on that Kenny, who had gone on to the prom with his girl, had somehow got uh, grabbed by the creeper and had gotten killed. So... Because we, of course, have Sheriff Dan, who ends up telling this whole story, that how Sheriff Dan ends up getting connected to Galen is, and how, like, he ended up starting to do this whole mission, was that he ended up finding out from Galen about, at this prom, 
her son going missing. And, like, there was no evidence that this kid was, uh, like, attacked or anything. But so, Galen was to go on and tell Sheriff Dan that she wanted to be a part of finding her son and, like, solving this creeper problem. And so, that's what turned around and made Sheriff Dan want to go on and... And go after this creeper character. As well as finding a number of other people. Who were to want to become uh, creeper hunters. Here's the thing. I honestly would have liked for Sheriff Dan to have had his own personal story. Rather than sponging off of some character that already exists in this movie. But, like, I guess it helps us tell the backstory of Galen and her son, even though it was honestly a little bit too late in this film. <laughs> it could have said that sooner to help us understand why Galen is to be talking to this ghost. It seems very unusual for this film. But so, it is what it is. So, moving on. So, we, in the... In the midst of after that whole machete moment, we then are to have Sergeant Davis Tubbs, who is to have been from the original Jeepers Creepers movie in that uh, that sheriff's uh, station that was to try to go on and take this creeper down and failed miserably. So we had a Sergeant Davis Tubbs who this creeper had gone on and decided to F off. And so we have the sergeant that is to find the creeper's vehicle. And so Tubbs is to have the guys just go on and kind of stick their head into this, this vehicle because that's a just brilliant move, right? <laughs> Honestly, I gotta say that the police in this movie are stupid. <laughs> I gotta say. But there's a number of just dumb characters that instead of thinking, Oh yeah, this is the creeper's vehicle. We should be just running a million miles away from this vehicle. But instead, no. Like, let's poke our head in it. Let's go on and just, like, check it out. Because, like, we just want to die for some bizarre reason. So, come to find out, uh, we have one of the officers that are to go on and kind of stick their head into this vehicle. And just be like, wow, like, uh, what a thing here. What a thing we got. And all of a sudden, one of the guys ends up having his arm sliced open because... It seems that the back of this truck, when you open up these double doors, there's also this deterrent where uh, these spikes are to come like down from both uh, bottom and top to slice through somebody who tries to get into this van that, of course, they're uh, like kind of scaring away unwanted people into this vehicle, whoever would want to go on and just go into this vehicle. So we have the sergeant who's like, okay, just get this thing out of here. Just tow this thing away. Like, this is a death trap. Let's get this thing out of here. So then we go on. We have Sheriff Dan who ends up arriving to talk to Sergeant Davis Tubbs. So we have Dan giving bizarre things like bloody and... <laughs> Uh, uh, and so, when Dan makes it there with his, uh, with his creeper hunters, we have Sheriff Dan that is to ask Sergeant Davis Tubbs what had happened here, but Sheriff Dan is to also tell him, it's like, well, hey, like, uh, like, uh, like, talk to me, but, like, uh, make sure you have your head on straight before you go on and talk to me kind of thing. And it's like, I'm sorry, like, Sheriff Davis Tubbs, like, 
He doesn't feel like he's like crying or bawling his eyes out <laughs> during this whole like event. It's, it's not like he's like, oh my god, uh, I'm losing my mind. This is crazy. It seems that Sergeant Davis Tubbs, when he meets up with Sheriff Dan, seems rational. But then Sheriff Dan is to go on and re like re give this sergeant a line that makes no sense to this sergeant who is to seem to be calm. And so like, I don't know what the line was. Let me know in the comments below what it was. Like, it was something like where it's like, Hey, like, uh, like get your head on straight and tell me what happened here. Uh, cause like this guy, I guess was shaking in his boots or crying. I don't know from what it doesn't really look like in the film. So, Sergeant Davis is to mention that Barry had gone, or Derry had gone on and gotten collected by the Creeper. And that Trish is to be left in, hit, in her, or in uh, the Sergeant's precinct. And so, this tells me that this is to be the continuation of what had happened from the first movie. And so. They. End up going on. To. Have. Sheriff Dan. Uh, then talk about. The vehicle that the creeper had. And the sheriff is to mention. That they're. That they're going to kind of just tow that away. And. Really, it's like, well, that's a mistake because the creeper is going to want to get back to his vehicle. So, come to find out now, Sheriff Dan and Sergeant Davis are to chase after this tow truck that is to have the uh, the the truck that uh, the creeper had, and so we have this. Uh, Frank Tow Truck Driver and Deputy Danny Long, I, or Danny Lang, I think. And so they are hauling away this vehicle. And what ends up happening is the Creeper ends up showing up and detaching his vehicle from this tow truck. And then all of a sudden we start to see that... Uh, the vehicle is now just wheeling itself down the street, down this decline, and the creeper is looking at both Frank and the deputy, and is like, hey, like... But then, all of a sudden, we have the creeper turn to look back at both Frank and the deputy, and he ends going... To all of a sudden make us realize that he's going to go after one of them. And so, we see, finally, the truck kind of disappear. But then, all of a sudden, Frank has to notice that there is a truck coming up to them. And it seems to be that same truck. So, we then turn around and have the creeper that is to go on, get out of its vehicle, and is to make its way back to Frank to take Frank and nibble off a bit of him. We all, and and so the whole entire time, the deputy just does nothing. She's just frozen there. She's like, ah, like, at least it's not coming after me, but still. <laughs> so we later on just see the deputy just in the tow truck and she's just like, fetal position she's like oh my god at least it wasn't me <laughs> kind of thing and she's like oh my god this is awful <sighs> so we also because sergeant davis tubbs is new to all of this we also had sheriff dan who was to give sergeant davis tubbs the rundown of the creeper 
and mention to him that uh, every 23 years for 23 days, this thing is to eat and it eats us and it tries to go on and, and find uh, the perfect part or the per perfect piece to re uh, replenish itself. And so... So now, like, I, I finally figured out what the heck that whole, like, 23 years, 23 days thing. Like, it didn't really seem like they, like, I don't know if they clarify that in certain films. But I'd always get that confused. They'd be like, the 23rd spring of the 23rd. I was like, what, what, when, it, when is it coming back? <laughs> oh, this comes back like it. Oh, okay, uh, all right. Like, it's like the clown character. All right, you, you got me. You got me. Why, again, why does it, why does it choose 23 years? I'm, I'm just like, what, what is the significance of that? <laughs> Was the the twenty third day the original release of of uh, of this movie? It should have been because that would have made a lot of sense to be like October twenty third, and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, it's the twenty third day." Anyways, uh, and then they would have like continued every franchise and in the franchise to just have that same day release. That would have been like masterful. But anyways, so pushing along, so. Now we've gone into all of that. Uh, and so the creeper is to get back his vehicle, so on and so forth. So now let's go on and focus on possibly a boring story, but it's the main story of this film, so it is what it is. So we have Addison who is to have this barn and is to try and feed her horse, who doesn't really have much hay left. So... We have Addison who is going on and is to see her grandmother Galen yell and wail at some tree because Galen instead is to actually be yelling at her dead son, um, Kenny. She's to be yelling at... So yeah, so that would have to be like just Kenny. Anyway, so... So, Galen is trying to warn, or, or Kenny is trying to warn Galen that she needs to leave this place. Because the creeper is going to come back for what's dug under here that Kenny had kept a secret. And if the creeper is to get this back and it will that whoever is going to be at this house is also going to die so kenny is warning galen to just get the f out of here just like just drive until you can't drive no more so galen is arguing with kenny and yelling at him and all kinds of things and so addison is like this woman is crazy <laughs> thank god like uh, like, I just bizarrely just hated my father, and so my mother just shipped me off to my crazy grandmother. Isn't that great? Supposedly, that's what Buddy is to tell us the story is for Addison, how uh, it seems that there was conflict between Addison's parents, so they just shipped her off to her grandmother. So, and we also had the scene where Addison was talking about how she would have this cat that would purposely poop in her stepdad's shoes consistently, and Addison loved that. But then it seemed that when they went on and got ri rid of Addison, they probably got rid of the cat also. Uh, so, we have Addison that talks to Galen... And Addison is talking about, like, well, hey, we need hay. Uh, hey, we need some hay. And so Galen is to say, it's like, well, like, we're all maxed out on credit for the hooks. So, like, I don't think we're going to be able to get any more hay. And so Galen is to tell Addison, it's like, well, you should probably sell that horse. 
And Addison's like, no, like, I can't sell this horse uh, because it means too much to her. So, Addison is, to also be told by Galen, that she needs to go on and uh, she needs to be with her friends for a while, uh, for a couple of days. And... Addison's like, well, why? And Galen's like, well, it's just like, I just like, I just need you to, to do that. So Addison makes her way to her friend's house, who I believe uh, is to be Gracie Mathers. Man, was this girl good looking. <laughs> Uh, might as well say it. Uh, so the friend of Addison was like, man. Uh, but Addison was pretty good looking too, but still. Uh, but moving on. So come to find out, we have Addison that is using every single bit of gas because at some point she's to need to go into town to try and see if she can get hay for her horse and she barely has enough gas to get in there but she's wasting gas getting to her friend's house to then turn around and then get to uh the hooks like hay barn or whatever the hay facility and i was like that's stupid but we had Addison that was to want to go on and tell her friend, it's like, well, hey, like, uh, like I'm going to need to like stay here for a couple of days and so on and so forth. But then also Addison makes her way to, uh, to these, to this people's place and come to find out, uh, we have a guy named Kirk who is to trap this bunny. And so... We, of course, have Gracie that is to be upset with Kirk because she is to go on and put this uh, rabbit in this cage. And we have Kirk who's kind of playing around with the, the rabbit, trying to ping on it. And Gracie is like, well, just get it out of the cage. And also, like, Kirk's mother is saying, like, well, yeah, like, you should release this animal. Why? What? What is the problem with them not being able to do that themselves? <laughs> is is it too hard? Is it is it difficult to get the the bunny out of the cage? The problem would have been solved so much quicker if Quirk Quirk Kirk didn't do it. Didn't have to do it himself. That would resolve everything. Or have Addison go on and open up the cage herself, and problem solved. But at some point later on in the movie, we then finally get the rabbit out of this cage, and then <laughs> problem solved again. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't forget about that moment in this movie because that was vital to the story of this film. But anyways, uh, so Kirk is to get on his uh, motorcycle or his bike uh, because, of course, he is going to head off with his friends. So, this guy goes on and needs a truck to ride a motorcycle, and now I'm confused. <laughs> you couldn't have just rode the motorcycle to where your friends are, but he needed this truck with this latch on it. So... To show us where, like, what he's doing. So, we have Addison that is to leave after talking to her friends and confirming stuff. So, Addison makes her way to the Hook family, uh, as well as Grace, who had go gone on and talked to Addison about, like, well, hey, like, are you ever going to hook up with Buddy? It seems like he's into you. And Addison's like, well, like, he does have a good butt, but, mm. So, kind of doing that setup. So, come to find out, Addison goes uh, 
to this hay bale. And so we have Buddy there and he's like, oh, hey, hi, hi, Addison. Like, uh, like, I'm going to see if you have another order of hay so we can kind of get you loaded up. And we, of course, have like the, the guy that's next to a buddy who's like, yeah, I can give her a load. <laughs> Sure, whatever you want to go on and say here or there, buddy. Uh, who's not buddy. So, we find out that Buddy is to realize that uh, Addison is not on the paperwork. And he's like, oh, like uh, you'll probably need to go on and talk to my dad. So, Addison goes on and, I guess, supposedly talks to Cal Hooks and then leaves. And Buddy's like, hey, what are you doing? Like, where, where are you going? And so, Buddy is to go and speak with his father, and Buddy's like, well, hey, like, I'm going to open up my wallet and give you some money for this hay, and Cal is like, what are you doing? Like, the this family, like, they're broke. And Buddy's like, but you don't understand, Dad. Like, like this girl, Addison, she loves this horse, and... Like, I'm going to do whatever, like, uh, I can to, like, get this girl to have this horse because, like, I want to win her over, I guess. And so, we have Cal that's telling Buddy, it's like, well, you can do better. <laughs> you really could, son. You could find a person that is not the main character of this movie and latch on to them, which will probably lead you to die because you're not latched on to the main character. And what a mistake that will be. So. Buddy then runs off to bring the hay to Addison. Uh, and so he is driving and is to find Addison. He's like, hey, yeah, hey, like. Uh, like, I have your hay for you. Like, do you want uh, like, do you want your uh, your horse fed? And Addison's like, oh, my God, like such a nice guy. So, Buddy goes on to deliver all this hay, and uh, come to find out they're still, like, seeing that, that Galen is just still, like, uh, crazy at this point. As Galen is to now be digging this hole, because she wants to find out what Kenny had dug... In, in this hole to figure out, like, okay, like, why is this thing so special? So, Galen then goes on to pull this, this hand out of this bag. And then Galen goes on to put her hands on the, uh, the other hand and just kind of, like, yeah, like, this seems right. Like, a hand that is to easily be able to move. And, whoa! W wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> we all of a sudden have the hand that is to be uh, clutching on to Galen's. Like, forcing Galen to lift up in the air. And I was like, say what now? <laughs> We have this hand so strong that it can float a person into air, it seems. And we then all of a sudden have the rolling back in the eyes of Galen. And she is to see the origin story of the creeper that we never see in this film. But by the end of the movie... And this is where roughly about when the movie ends... We start to have a number of people who are to start to, like, grasp onto this hand. And by the end of it, we have this hand that is nailed down to this ground. And there is a sign there that states that, like, hey, we know your secret now. And the creeper is to look at this sign and be like, ah, oh, they know. <laughs> they don't know how to kill me still. <laughs> but, oh my god, they know my secret. Will it ever make a difference from other films? Probably not. <laughs> but they know. 
They know how to defeat me. So, maybe some guy with a harpoon gun does, but still. So, they figured it out that way. Uh... But so, we have Addison and we have Buddy who make their way to Buddy's house and come to find out there are a number of guys that are to be uh, kind of underneath these trucks and underneath these... Uh, these massive tanks, like tanks that have like wheels on them, like that's how big they are. Uh, kind of like something that you would have to haul with a truck. Uh, so these guys are like underneath these and like, okay, like, where is this creeper guy? Because come to find out, Buddy is to spot uh, one of his father's workers and he is to ask him like, hey, what's going on? And the guy's like, well, hey, like, uh, like, make sure you look up because, like, there's something after us and, like, try to get out of here. Try to, like, drive like crazy your way out of here. And Buddy's like, okay, this seems unusual. So Addison is to also see the two other guys. So now Addison is asking, um... Buddy here, what's going on? And Buddy is filling her in. So then Buddy then calls that same worker guy to ask him more about what's going on. And so he's like, hey, you're making too much noise. So all of a sudden we start to see that the creeper is grabbing these guys that are underneath this tanker and starting to kill them off. And so... The next thing we end up seeing is one of the guys end up smacking on this window that is Addison's like, Ugh. <laughs> I'm dead. And that is to, of course, be the one one jump scare of this movie. But then we also go on to have Buddy who's trying to get his car started. He's like, Ur, Ur, Ur. yeah. Whatever that means, it means that this car is not moving. Or whatever that sound is. So, Buddy is trying to get his car started. It's not working. Uh, we also had the worker guy when he was to call Buddy who was mentioning like, well, hey man, I have guns. Uh, like, maybe you could go in there and get guns and shoot this thing and kill it off. But yeah, Buddy does not go on uh, and go and find guns. Uh, he probably ends up finding javelins somewhere down, down the road by the end of this film uh, that he has in a sack as he is leaving for this bus. So, so what ends up happening is the creeper ends up breaking in to the glass as the creeper is to make this kind of like this noise and it vibrates the glass to break it. Man, I wish he could have used that in Jeepers Creepers 2 with that whole bus. Just by like, and like he could have gone on and broke that one thing of glass and just like grabbed people and just be like, hey, like I'm getting you. <laughs> I'm coming after all y'all people. Because I'm breaking glass, y'all. <laughs> so... The creeper ends up tipping over Buddy's truck and come to find out he grabs Addison, but like F Buddy, right? Because Buddy has nothing that the creeper wants. And we also had the creeper that was to kind of like kind of the window and kind of like look in there like, yeah, <laughs> Addison's my gal. So the creeper goes on and collects Addison and doesn't take what he needs from her right away, which is unusual. He just kind of like, you know, what? I'm just gonna let this this one sit. Like, I I like I don't want to just like take this one right then and right then and now. Like, but like I think I'm just gonna go on and just kind of like savor the flavor of this one. So. 
now we have a whole other thing going on here. Let's get to that. So, we have these biker guys that are to motocross their way, what, whatever this means, uh, bike their way to find this unusual truck. And they, of course, have to read the license plate that anybody that goes on to seeing this truck, that's the first thing that you do for some reason. And I don't understand that. Why is it all of a sudden we've become a society that always has to read a license plate? I would probably just take a picture of the license plate and just be like, okay, well, like, hey, if anything shady happens here, like, I'm going to send the, the photo of uh, this license plate uh, to my Facebook feed and, <laughs> and people will know what happened to me. So we have the guys that are reading off this license plate is like beating you, beat eating you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, they end up figuring out that this vehicle has a tie to uh, the murderous creepus, creeper character. As we, of course, are to go on and remember... Oh, there's one thing that I didn't say in Jeepers Creepers 2. In Jeepers Creepers 2, there was a radio that goes off and it's to be a news bulletin... Uh, talking about the weather, I think, but then is to also talk about how they were to have gone on and found, uh, like, where Derry had went into to find all those bodies that were, like, sewn together and whatever. They ended up finding out that some of the people that were in there had, like, wooden fillings, uh telling us that, like, the people that were down in that area that Derry went into, like, those bodies had to have been, like, hundreds of years old, like, 200 years old, down there with, like, wooden fillings. And I was like, wow, that is, like, that was interesting, but I didn't remember that when I did the uh, review of that, but I guess it just jogged in my memory now. But anyways, we have these bikers... And they decide, instead of getting a million miles away from this truck, realizing that the creeper at some point is going to come back, they instead decide, well, how about we just go on and want to see if we can go on and start breaking in uh, to this vehicle, this truck. So... The guys are wanting to try to bash this thing or try to figure out a way to break into it. And so we have a biker named Luke who ends up taking this rock and is to chuck it onto the hood of this uh, vehicle. And it ends up bouncing back and hitting him. And he's like, oh, man. <laughs> and so come to find out that is to tell us that this thing is to have some bizarreish, ricochet-like power as these guys are trying to use common things to try to break into this vehicle, and it's not working. So, we also go on and have our characters that they open up the back of this truck to find out that there are a number of bodies there, and also... We have them go on and they almost do like the 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 trip uh, uh, spike thing. They almost get uh, attacked by that, but luckily they go on and get out of that just in time. So they're like, okay, like let's get the F out of here. This is wild. So everybody goes in and gets their bike and tries to run off. And all of a sudden, we end up having this spear that has this rope attached to it fire out of this vehicle. Like, of course, when the sergeant and the guys were messing around with this vehicle before, we have this same spear with this rope fire out of the vehicle and then retract 
and they're like, oh my god, like this is this is crazy. Like this vehicle has so many uh, like traps to it. It's like this is insane. So as we have all the bikers desperately trying to go on uh, to get out of here, we have this spear with this rope that is really just targeting on to Kirk and is to hit him in the back of his leg, which is to basically be his calf. And so now Kirk is to cry in agony and is to desperately need his friends to help him try and pull this spear out. So we have uh, Kirk's friends and so we have Luke who's trying to pull this, but then all of a sudden we start to notice that the spear and the rope are starting to retract again. And so one of Kirk's friends is like, dude, I'm I'm out of here. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm just going to leave. I'm going to go and try and just get help. That's what I'll do. So we have biker Luke that is to try to go on and pull this thing out and he can't. And so we just get to where Kirk ends up getting stuck at this vehicle and like he's asking his friends like, well, Hey, like what should we do? Like what? what, what? So all of a sudden we finally have the creeper arrive with his body on him. So we have the wings kind of spread out like, Ooh, wow, this is a cool visual. So we now have Kirk who realizes, well, I'm effed. The other bikers just run away from Kirk and they're just like, Hey man, like we're going to go on. <laughs> Leave you. Sorry. Uh, you're dead. So the creeper ends up tossing Addison into his vehicle. And then he ends up tossing Kurt in there as well. Uh, or no, uh, he ends up tossing Kirk in there and then he ends up tossing Addison, uh, and I think Addison ends up being in the vehicle later. Um, anyways, so we have the creeper who is to grab this spear and just be like, okay, well, like, I'm going to go on and like, I'm going to figure out, uh, like how, like, I'm going to get to these guys. So creeper tosses a spear and we have the spear that perfectly hits both Biker Luke and I think Biker Jody. Jody? They end up getting hit through the chest, both of them. And they end up falling over like, oh, I'm dead. And I'm like, okay, that, that seemed a little goofy. But anyways, like, perfectly aligned that way. I would have thought it would have hit one of them, not both of them simultaneously. That seems a little weird. Uh, or at least you would have kind of seen, like, some kind of, like, uh, one got hit in the head, one got hit in, like, the, uh, the butt or something. That would have made sense. Uh, in my brain. Something like that. Uh toward be like the the up part or the down part uh i don't know but so both the bikers are dead and so now the creeper is driving around in his vehicle and then he leaves his vehicle so both kirk and addison at some point are trying to figure out how to get out of this vehicle they're trying to figure it out so we have kirk who is to tell Addison, it's like, well, hey, like, can you find something sharp so you can, like, kind of cut your, uh, your ropes? Addison is to go on and figure this out. And so then Kirk is to get free. And so they end up looking at the front of the vehicle to see if there is something that they can press to open up these doors and get the heck out of there. 
And come to find out when Kirk tries to hit one of these buttons, he accidentally triggers one of these uh, one of these spear things to come through his head and kill him. That, of course, the spear that is to be uh, attached to the seat. Uh, like, it's to be kind of attached, like, where, like, the, the butt of the seat is. Like, we have this thing that it's going to going going and and kills the guy while he's kind of like oh hey yeah like let's go and look into the front of this car and he dies sadly enough so we so we've had so kirk is dead addison is trying to like put the pieces together and figure it out like okay like how can i get out of here like they end up like blaring this horn that the the uh the car has and they're trying to figure something out. And so now we have to go on and focus on uh, Sergeant Davis and Sheriff Dan and try to put that, put those pieces together. So Sheriff Dan and Sergeant Davis make their way to Galen. And so Sheriff Dan is to mention the connection uh, with Galen that he has. So... Dan and Davis make it to Galen, and Galen is to have this wrap around her hand, and Sheriff Dan is like, hey, what happened to your hand? Like, also, Galen seems to be very shaken, and it's like, okay, what's wrong with you? So, Galen is to bring uh, Davis and Dan to this pot that the hand is supposed to be inside of because she's like yeah i trapped it in there and like i went on and touched this thing and uh and i was to get like uh the origin story of this character couldn't have sheriff dan taken galen's word for it <laughs> well hey galen what did you see? And then Galen would have been like, well, like, I'm going to take another stretch of moments in this film to explain the whole origin story of the Creeper. And hopefully there's some graphic that ends up uh, being put in place that explains all this. But sadly, there is not that moment. <laughs> Instead, Sheriff Dan just takes it upon himself. It's like, well, like, this woman, like, knows some kind of information that I don't. So I now need to know this information. So Sheriff Dan is like, we got to get that hand out of there and I need to touch it. And I just need to know because maybe there's a secret to beating this thing in that hand. So we have all the rest of the, the, the creeper hunters make their way to this place and we have the big gun that they're still showing that is going to be used at some point. So, uh, our our death machine, yeah, k -k -k, yeah, yeah, we have this big gun. So, all the guys, all the, the creeper hunters make their way there. Uh, and so, Dan is now going to hold on to this hand. And so, Galen is to tell Sheriff Dan before he does that. That all the creeper hunters need to hold on to him. And. And like they. Uh, like uh, Sheriff Dan really needs to like brace for what he's about to see. And that he will come back from it. So. Sheriff Dan is to touch this thing. And then he ends up going on. And he ends up kind of getting like flung back. To the point of him like falling onto the ground. And then, bizarrely, they end up having this, like, weird whipping sound effect that makes no sense for what's going on in this action. It's like... Whoosh, 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 whoosh. It's like, what the f is that? <laughs> what kind of garbage is that? Uh, and so, Sheriff Dan is just the, the comedic thing that just keeps on rolling, sadly enough. I'm sorry, Stan Shaw, but it's true. <laughs> so, we have 
Sheriff Dan, that after the aftermath of what he had seen, he's all going like this. He's like, mm, like, I'm just like, uh, yeah, this is bad. This is some bad stuff, everybody. Who wouldn't recommend it. And immediately after that, we, of course, have uh, Miller, who's like, well, I gotta get me uh, some of that hand. And Sergeant Davis is like, did you not just see that this guy just touched this hand and was to, like, not recoup from that? And Miller ends up telling Davis that's like, well, man, you don't understand. Like, you don't know what it's like. Because, like, you're just experiencing this now. Like, we've gone on and we've uh, been experiencing this for longer than you have. So, like, I'm going to go on and I'm going to touch that hand. But then, so, Miller does not go on and do said thing. And so... Because instead, David starts smacking this hand with this shovel. And, like, they don't go on and have anyone else touch hands with this thing. And at some point, we have Galen later on, who just kind of nails it to the ground. So, they realize that time has come to try and take down the Creeper. And so, we have Sheriff Dan that tells Miller... Like, hey, like, uh, Miller, you need to go on and get in front of uh, all the other vehicles and just blast this thing. And so Dan sends off all of the uh, the Creeper Hunters. And then Sheriff Dan is to get into his own vehicle. And Davis is like, wait a minute. Like, you just went through what you went through. Like, heck no, you're not going to be driving that car. <laughs> I can drive. So Davis is driving this vehicle. But then come to find out the scene where we actually start to see these characters were, of course, having Sheriff Dan driving and Davis is now like to be on the passenger side. So it's like, <sighs> so I guess they couldn't convince Dan to, to be in the, the right seat that he was supposed to be in. But for story purposes, also, they had to like they had to retcon that moment. So. We have Sheriff Dan and Sheriff Davis make it to the Creeper vehicle before anyone else does. And so Sheriff Dan is giving Davis uh, this rifle and is telling him, it's like, well, hey, you're a crack shot, right? And uh, Davis is like, yeah, you bet your sweet ass. <laughs> ASS. And so it's like, I would not be saying that kind of sh <laughs> like. So, Davis takes his gun and he's lining it up. He's like, yeah, like, I'm going to shoot these tires. So, Davis shoots the tires and at the first attempt, the bullet ricochets and almost hits back into the vehicle. And so, Davis tries again and again, a ricochet. And so, Davis is asking Dan, it's like, what are those wheels made of? And so Sheriff Dan is to start to realize, like, well, wait a minute. Like, maybe this entire vehicle is to either be, like, bulletproof or deathproof from the outside. So maybe when we're going to have Miller and his death machine... I don't know why I have to keep just doing this visual. Yeah, I just like doing this a lot. That the bullets will not go on and impact this vehicle. And Dan figures that out. And by the time that he does, we have Miller that's driving up to uh, to the Creeper. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to get this thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's go time kind of thing. Uh, that's not exactly at any word at all what he says, but still. So, Sheriff Miller is on his, his walkie, and he, of course, is to try and make Miller aware that the bullets will not work on this vehicle. I'm like, why are they even going on and having these characters try and take down the vehicle anyways? 
why not actually wait till the creeper gets out of the vehicle? Just follow this thing until the creeper gets out of its vehicle and then blow it away. Wait till that moment. But instead, Miller's like, yeah, I'm just going to light into this thing da -da 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 with this big machine, uh, with his big uh, mini gun, like gun, whatever thing. And so he lights bullets into this thing and every bit of them all ricochet back to the vehicle that Miller is in. And so now we see Miller just... We're just seeing a lot of that in this in this scene here where he's getting riddled with bullets. I'm like, man, what a great build up to that death machine like gun to just have Miller go on and be like. <laughs> what a just crushing defeat. But then I was laughing so hilariously at that moment. She's like, man, what a build, right? What a build to <laughs> great how useless was that so come to find out that is to go on and have all of these uh like oddly enough we also had the creeper vehicle that was to drop these uh these certain like weird looking wheel devices that were to track what it was going after. I don't know what this thing was like really we couldn't see it all that well. And I was like, what the heck is this? Uh, so this was some just item that fell from the bottom of the creeper vehicle and was, tr it was kind of tracking uh, the vehicles and having them just explode. And so what happens with both Dan and Davis is they end up getting hit by one of these things and that ends up having them uh, get into a car accident. And so now, of course, we have... Sheriff Dan that is telling Davis, like, hey, man, like, uh, like, uh, kind of save your ammunition and, uh, kind of do your best, like, so on and so forth. And freaking Sheriff Dan leaves. And Davis is like, what are you doing? Like, we need the, like, we need the, like, we need you to shoot something. So Sheriff Dan F's off. And so Sheriff Davis is to now have the shotgun and he's waiting for the creeper. And so come to find out we have the creeper who is to kind of spot Davis here and he has his throwing star and he chucks it. And wouldn't you know it, this creeper has such perfect accuracy that goes right into the barrel of the shotgun and that it blows Davis back. He's like, oh, crap. So, we assume that Davis is going to be dead here. But then come to find out Sheriff Dan is to be prepping uh, the gun that he now has to like consistently adjust to try and get to the creeper. And so the creeper is just like, well, okay, I'm just going to go and find where Sheriff Dan is and F off Sheriff Davis. So, Sheriff Dan is to continue to try and adjust this machine to line it up to where the creeper is. The creeper is to just slowly but surely make his way to this truck and is to flop his wings out. And get prepared to take down Sheriff Dan. By the time that of course the creeper gets so ridiculously close. Sheriff Dan then is to finally adjust this thing. And fire away on this. Uh, on these bullets to take down this creeper. And. 
that leads the creeper to fall on Sheriff Dan. And so the next thing that we end up seeing is that Sheriff Dan had an axe through his face and the creeper was to use like a Thor move to have the axe come back to him. And so we have uh, like Sergeant Davis is like, oh, my God, I am still effed here. This freaking sucks. So we so we go on and oh, my God, I'm, I'm trying to like I'm trying to figure out how this all wraps up here. So I think we do go on and we do have the creeper who kills Sergeant Davis. And then finally, after that, he then goes off to find his hand. And after he takes the hand from the nail, he ends up just breaking the hand and crumpling it up. And like, or no, 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 no. Sheriff Davis doesn't die. Sheriff Davis is, is just kind of driving off by the end of this movie and like he's driving off in defeat so like somehow like the creeper just kind of effed off and just kind of went another way it went another direction so we man this is a long review longer than probably any of the other films but there's so much going on plus also so much to talk about here so much stuff that i didn't say in the other films so, now we start to realize that this movie is ending. That we're getting all these cutscenes of all these other characters all doing other things. And I was like, okay, this is the end? Really? Like, this is, like, not an ending. <laughs> this is not how we end this film. What the fuck? <laughs> Why are you ending this movie with all these cutscenes of all these characters? That's like, oh yeah, here's where all their paths are. And here's where... Like, we started this film, and here's how we ended this film, with all these characters. Oh, isn't that grand? And so I'm like, what? So, come to find out... We, I guess, just had the creeper who just effed off. And so... We then have a scene where we have a Buddy... And we have Addison, uh, who, of course, are to have, like, Buddy say goodbye uh, because he's going uh, to go and play his basketball game with javelin sacks. And so come to find out he's going to the school bus where everybody is uh, singing that same team song from the, the second movie. And so it's like, okay, all right. So that is to tell us that this is to be tied to Jeepers Creepers 2 by the end of this. But then also we have Trish, who is like just next to a computer. And she's typing away and she is to vow her vengeance to, uh, to, her, uh, to seek vengeance of, uh, upon the death of her brother to go after this creeper and kill it which will never be a thing so it doesn't matter what this woman says here they could have ended this movie with the uh with the bus scene because trish did doesn't get involved in any other uh jeepers creepers project so what was the point uh, what was the point of doing that whole thing? That whole, like, uh, they could have cut that scene. But honestly, it's like, well, yeah, but we want the, we wanted this actress in the movie somehow. And so she just did a cameo. And I'm like, but yeah, but, like, you could have had her just at the, the prison um, or something. You could have had some scene where, like, she... Uh, she was with the guys wanting to join in and the sergeant was like, no, like you can't go on and you can't do this uh, to kind of just really like, I would have actually shown like real legitimate continuity 
by like having like the end of Jeepers Creepers 2 like finish up here to like kind of copy the scene and then you could have had uh, Trish at the end of this film then go on and vow her vengeance to the creeper which never is to again happen and so this is again to be how like the Power Rangers reboot movie ended where everybody was like uh, or the the teacher was like uh, excuse me Tommy Oliver uh, is Mr. Oliver here and then like we never see a continuation of that story uh, because why would we because like uh, there were some goofy visuals going on in that film um, but hey at the end of the day it's another film uh, I liked the story of that film but I really didn't like the visuals those visuals are garbage um, but with that said, I'm just going to go on and get out of here. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that I forgot about, because I'm sure that there probably is. Uh, but other than that, I think I'm just going to go on and wrap this bad boy up. Uh, so, plus also this one was very long compared to all the others, and it's almost 20 minutes, uh, to this movie. Uh, so I apologize for the length of this. But this will also be the last Jeepers Creepers movie that I possibly review. Unless, surprisingly, there's going to be some other thing that comes out in the future. Uh, but I doubt it. <laughs> I would love for there to be another one of these. But, like, I would actually like for there to be a show. Considering you have, like, supposedly 23 days that this thing attacks people. Why not have, a like, a season that has 23 episodes? And... Honestly, like, all you would need for a character to have is, like, makeup for their hands and makeup for their face. And, like, you could play on the fact of, like, like, not having this character have, like, so many things that the Creeper normally has, like, wings or, or whatever. Or you could, like, build up to that or something. Um, like, I know a lot of people would just call that cheap, but, like, eh, like... Like, we could kind of bust out the CGI every once in a while to show the wings. Like, the wings don't have to be the main focus of, uh, of a show or a movie or whatever, but still. I'm going to just get out of here. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Let me know how you felt about this movie. I know people will probably hate it. But at the end of the day, it's it's just okay. Like, it, like... Uh... Like, I was to just be, like, just won over by things. But again, like, I'm not going to go on and say that uh, the other movies weren't be, like, um, over and above. Uh, this movie has its own charm to it. But there's some goofy, stupid things that I found funny in this film. So that's the positive of it. So, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.